friends I just want to show you my seed haul this is from botanical interests and I got about roughly 50 50 seeds packets and I really really wanted them um, a combination of flowers and vegetables Sorry about that, I had a hard time opening it with just one hand. So I love how they package the seeds. They're in a box so they don't get crushed and they're in good shape. And they always give you a seed starting guide pamphlet. And so firstly I got some chives, common chives. It's perennial, so that will be great. It'll keep coming back. Then I got some garlic chives, heirloom, perennial. So that's great. I really love things in the Allium family. Here is some Tokyo Long White Bunching Onion or Scallions. And they're frost tolerant. So that would be great. And King Richard Leeks. And they're frost tolerant. And this is Onion Bulb Cabernet Intermediate Day. So in the spring. This is shallot, onion, zebrun, frost tolerant. So I think I can grow some of these in the fall because they're frost tolerant. So this I'm, I'm going to grow. I have two of the zebrun because shallots are really good. They're mild between a garlic and an onion and they um, are multipliers. So this is 60 day Italian red of Florence bunching onion or scallion. Next I got some chervil or chervil, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Well, um, I want to know what it tastes like. Mia Shige White Daikon Radish. English Thyme Perennial. That's great. Love that idea that it will come back. Summer Savory. That's an annual. So between the Shervil and the Summer Savory, I'm just curious what they taste like. True Greek Oregano Lemon Balm Melissa Officinal um, Officinalis It's perennial. Oh, that's wonderful. I would like to make some tea out of that. And this was so pretty. Sweet Corn Painted Hill and look at how pretty that is. So you can make jewelry out of it, but lovely that you can eat it and it's a sweet corn and it's so pretty. I probably should have gotten more of these because I really like corn a lot. I haven't eaten corn in several years and I had corn this year and it was so good. Tetra dill. It's a different kind of dill. So I have the bouquet dill. So I just wanted to try out this tetra dill. Next is Napa Cabbage 1 Kilo Slow Bolt. So I love that it's slow bolt and it it's a good cabbage. Very clean, very easy to wash, very abundant. Mizuna mustard. These are a little bit hard to wash, but I wanted I wanted it for making 
So mizuna is good for making um, to heat up for hot pots. Next I have hearts of gold cantaloupe. And this is, this year we've been really big into melons. We had lots of cantaloupe, lots of watermelon this year. So I decided to try all the different kinds, such as this Minnesota midget. These are small size, hand sized. Now, I don't know, I feel like when they're hand sized and I, you grow them at home, they're even smaller. So when they're normal sized melons, they might be even smaller, like the hand sized ones. So, because you're growing it from home instead of it at a farm of some kind. Pepper, ancho poblano, chili pepper, and it is it is frost sensitive. Of course, it's in the chili family. So, I'm going to grow that next year, the pepper family. And pasilla bajo. So, that one looks pretty different. I'm just trying out different flavored chili peppers because I love chili peppers. Shishito pepper. I have the dragon roll one and I I don't know if I'll be able to harvest seeds from it. And here is Thai hot chili pepper. I love these peppers. They taste so good. And patio choice yellow bush cherry. So I figure I'm going to grow a variety in a pot on like the, the patio. So I, I like that idea a lot. And Black Crim, I've heard of many good things um, about the flavor of that one. And I bought three of these guys. I'm obsessed with these. Every time I see people growing these, it has a very tall upright um, growing habit. So it's called Basil Everleaf Emerald Towers. Towers is the key word because it just keeps growing vertically really nicely. So like even if the bottom one's leaves touch the ground and get diseased, for the most part, it just keeps growing taller and taller and these will be like nice leaves. And of course I plan to harvest a lot of them because basil is my favorite, favorite herb of all time. Next we're gonna move on to the flowers. The first flower I got was this Rouge Royale. Now, for the first time this year, I grew a reddish colored sunflower and I loved it so much. It was so, so beautiful. So I got this one because it's Rouge Royale. It'll be even brighter red, I believe. So, so pretty. And I got the Tall Maximum Blend Snapdragon. Isn't that gorgeous? And it's perennial, which I'm so surprised. I had no idea that snapdragons are perennial. And Salvia Violet Queen Perennial. I've been looking for perennial things because um, we're digging up our front yard and I plan on growing kind of like a lot of like um, flowers and things like that to attract uh, beneficial insects. Here's the Signet marigold gem blend and I saw someone growing these and they were so prolific there were tons and tons of flowers and look at how there are different colors and I, I just love it so much because it it was very prolific and here's the marigold French red metamorph it looks so pretty and I like this love and a miss Miss Jekyll blend so it has the lighter blue and the purplish darker blue and then white. So I love that. It's multicolored. Now this one is the African Marigold Kilimanjaro White. And I saw someone had grown it because um, typically we don't buy too many white flowers. In Asian culture it it's not like the favorite color. Um, but actually these get really really tall and they look so pretty and healthy so I I want to have that um, lavender English tall very pretty and then there's Munstead lavender and then there's Munstead lavender it's perennial <gasps> I love that 
and I decided to get this gourd hard shelled Corsican look at how pretty it is you can um, grow it and cut off the top hopefully that's something that's gonna be easy to do I hope and then just hollow it out and um, smooth it out and you can have bowls or like decorative bowls to hold things which I think is so fantastic and um, maybe even make um, you know something nice out of it I just think that is the best idea and so useful next there is this Crespedia drumstick flower it looks so pretty I love when things have these whimsical vibes to it how those have like little yellow orbs on them and I am obsessed with this zeolites Calendula. It looks so pretty. Little yellow center and pinkish outsides and so many petals. They're so beautiful. True hyssop. Um, I believe you can make tea out of this. Um, and also it attracts a lot of uh, insects. Beneficial insects. This oopsie daisy calendula looks so pretty. It looks like it's two-toned but I'm not sure but the the picture looks really pretty so I can't wait to grow it and see what it really looks like and then um, Cherokee Sunset Black-Eyed Susan look at the color on this it's so pretty I am definitely gonna grow it and I love that it's perennial but it says tender so I guess it must be frost tender Aster Bonita Top Blue. Look at how pretty that is. It has a yellow center and then all those pretty purple flowers. <gasps> so lovely. So beautiful. Alyssum Sweet Oriental Nights. That looks really pretty and I heard it's very fragrant. So I want to add that. And Hungarian Blue Bread Seed Poppy. And I did hear that you can use the seeds for to, to put into your bread. That really is the origin of the bread seed. Um, poppy Bread Seed Peony Double Blend. So that looks really, really gorgeous. I love that it has so many petals. And then this one is so um, classy. Mother of Pearl with those kind of muted colors so so pretty so that's what I got and I really love it uh, from time to time I love to browse um, the the catalogs and also the websites to see what they have uh, available which it changes all the time the availability of the seeds so I get them as when as as soon as I can when I can Hi friends, so I needed a garden calendar and I wanted it to be large because I want to be able to write on it um, and plan out things and have lots of space. So I um, asked my husband to go to Target to get a calendar and I specifically said a desk calendar. So look at how huge it is and I love it. So it says January 2024 and then for the days it has some funny um phrases sunday scaries oh taco tuesday hump day is it friday yet tgif saturday at last and they just gave you like you know um little things that you would be making like appointments and stuff on your calendar i love the monthly calendar because i like to see everything at a glance and um, so over here it says my epic plan and you could put like your plans your to-do list um, and the world will end if I don't do this and so you have to write whatever is really important and so this is just a cover page so don't worry that it has this so let me show you what I plan for January so far so I got this a little bit late because um, earlier in the year uh, my husband and I were both sick. We got that dreaded thing. Luckily our kids were healthy and we tried to keep them away from us and luckily we have a lot of help 
and people um, kind of took her kids in, in spurts um, and babysat them, basically. So um, I put my epic plan, grow more food this year, start things earlier, succession plant, uh, preserve more food, freeze, freeze dry, and I'm going to have to try to learn to pickle. I really do. And then transplant to do, I need to transplant greens to my garden beds. I need to sow spring seeds, eight of everything. Um, sow flowers in the garden beds. And I'm going to try to winter sow a bunch of things, but we'll see if I can. Um, and then if not, if I don't winter sow them, then I, I'll start them later. No stress. I don't like to stress. Um, I'm trying to enjoy it gardening and do what I can when I can rather than stressing over everything and definitely you need compost the world will end if I don't compost I definitely need lots and lots of good nutritious soil um, I wasn't able to go out and rake up leaves this year because um, because we were sick we were down for like two good weeks and and then some it's easier to get um, tired now because we were like bedridden for a week and then we were sick um, the rest of the, the another week and because we haven't done very much you know it takes time to recover and it's been so darn cold and windy and so I've been covering my strawberry towers at night because it's getting down to frost temperatures and then I, of course you have to uncover them in the morning and same with my pepper plants and then I have to look up what a municipal garden is and grow for sure this year I love 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 growing my own things to use so I'm going to definitely grow loofah again um, I want to grow a bitter melon I'm going to make some delicious food with it and then I, I want to grow this Corsican gourd. This, this will be the first year to grow Corsican gourd. The other two I've, I've grown before. And then I want to crochet a blanket since it's cold right now. It'll sit on my lap and warm my lap as I make it grow, um, as I make it bigger. Um, so we've been setting up the garden beds, filling them, doing lasagna gardening, and then I'm kind of documenting the days that are cold based on the forecast and um, so over here I put that I'm going to sow some seeds however I'm not too sure because it's going to be really cold this Friday it's going to be like uh, below freezing temperatures and then I started to plan out today I pulled out some radishes and some carrots and weeds out of my large concrete garden bed and these are some of the things I plan on growing in there so I'm going to sow some direct sow seeds into there so um, I'm going to kind of like uh, rake the soil a little bit till it I guess you would say and then I'm going to add some more soil and then I'm going to make little um, divots and then sow some seeds and I'm gonna fill in what I grew in my small concrete bed. They're already growing in there. I, I started them as seedlings back in like November or something and then I transplanted them into the garden bed and something's been nibbling everything but I forgot some of the things that I grew in there so I gotta go back and find out and fill it in in the box there. And then in our front yard is where we have our garden beds or new garden beds that we need to fill out so I'm gonna be doing that as well <clears throat> hello friends I just wanted to share with you my Dollar Tree seed haul so I found out that the Dollar Tree seeds they're four for a dollar really inexpensive from American Seed and if you look up American Seed Company its parent company is actually what produces um, the fairy morse seeds and they are pretty safe if you're worried about that they're such cheap seeds they're um, non-gmo 
and they are high quality seeds actually. So I would like to share with you my Dollar Tree seed haul. I'm super excited because I've never bought them before and I've been curious about it. I've been seeing people buy them, especially in the um, last four years. Seeds were a little bit hard to come by. There, um, there was even a shortage of seeds and people are a little bit um, stockpiling on the seeds, the especially preppers. So I don't think it's a bad idea necessarily. Um, and you could just save these or grow a bunch, you know, and share it with your friends and family. So I got two packages of Long Island Mammoth. You could grow them and save future seeds that are acclimated to your climate. You could grow a bunch of things and then freeze them, freeze dry them, preserve them in some way. So it's not a bad idea. And you could freeze just the seeds in a package, like in a box, and that way it prolongs its shelf life. I got two packages of chives. I got two packages of white Lisbon bunching onions. I love green onions. That's definitely a staple that will always be in my garden. Um, as far as the chives go, I love the chives as well. They're good for omelets and all kinds of stuff for flavoring soups. And then as far as the, dills, the dill goes, it's good. I like to stick it like um, on, on my rice as the rice is cooking. I just kind of top it at the top with the dill or in soups and all kinds of things. And when you let it grow, you can collect the seeds. And then the dill also, um, a lot of butterflies love them. So you, you can create a habitat for the butterflies. So then I got myself two of this variety of lettuce um, and I like it because it's called Paris Island Cos or COS I don't know but it's almost like a romaine but probably without the, the bitterness I won't know until I um, grow it and try it and then I got myself one of these iceberg lettuces. I know some people don't like it, but I love how fresh and crisp and, and watery they are. So I found this particular store had Scarlet Nantes and Danvers Half Long. And this looks like a really good carrot. However, I don't know. I, I know Danvers is pretty popular. Excuse my dog, she wanted to get some attention. <laughs> um, so I got two kinds of carrots, only two packages. I kind of regret not getting them because they're a little bit hard to grow and it's nice to um, overseed and then just pluck out because the seeds are so tiny. It's just nice to overseed and then pluck out the 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 space space them out you know pluck out the ones that you don't need when they're overcrowded so i got the scarlet nantes and the danvers half long these look pretty robust don't they next i got the calabrese broccoli i just love brassicas and i have to have them so i got myself three of them and um the seeds last a long time, so I'm not too afraid of that. Now, I have this Snowball X Cauliflower. I purchased three Snowball X uh, Cauliflowers. I have not personally grown cauliflowers before. I tried recently, but it was kind of pretty cold, and then what? every time my plant tried to grow, something chewed at the leaves and stuff like that. So, um, I will try it again. Um, in a covered situation or in a different situ location. Next, I got myself a bunch of herbs, but I only got one of each. So I got some sage. 
some thyme, parsley, Italian, oregano, it doesn't say what kind of oregano, and then sweet Italian basil, as well as Genovese basil. Now, I should have probably bought more basil because I love basil, um, and the seeds are really, really tiny. And maybe I should have gotten more herb seeds because for me, it's been hard to um, germinate them. I don't know if it's because I was watering them too harshly so the seedlings get moved around and then they end up dying. A few years ago, I grew a lot of squashes and I ended up, I had so many butternut squash. I gave a bunch to my sister and some family members and I still had a lot and I over I used them over the winter so um, this so I actually used up all my um, butternut squash seeds and I really love these so I got I got one package because as you know I'm not sure if you know but if you grow just one variety of squash um, you can get a lot of seeds from one plant so that's why I only bought one Next, I got myself two of these Blue Lake Stringless Pole Beans, and I chose them specifically because they're pole beans. I probably should have bought more because um, I had great success with growing pole beans last year, and I had lots and lots of um, yard-long beans. Then I got this Tender Green Improved Bush Bean, and I like the name, it's tender green, so I'm hoping that that's what it tastes like. It's tender and, and not, and hopefully stringless too. And then I have this Garden Bean Cherokee Wax Yellow Bush. And I'm trying to eat different colored foods so I can get different nutrients from them. And this looks so pretty and I'm just wondering what the flavor is. So I wanted to try it. So I got two different varieties of cucumbers. I got the two munchers and one straight eight. So I'm going to see how they taste and, and compare, you know, if they get better and how they grow and um, just, see, just see how they are. Um, and you know what? That's the thing. You can gra grow these. You can grow these and buy a bunch of seeds that only cost you. You can grow seeds that only cost you 25 cents so that you can try this, these particular varieties and see whether or not you like that variety. So you can buy um, other, other seeds in the future, but just it's really inexpensive just to try the variety with the dollar, dollar tree seeds. So here are some eggplants. In previous years I tried to grow the Rosa Bianca and another variety of eggplant and same thing the seeds are small and I had trouble growing them and then I bought two plants from the store, the seedlings, and I stuck them in the ground and they produced quite a bit for me. So, and I do love eggplant, so what I did was I just bought a couple packs of seeds and I might try to regrow them this year. What I'm doing differently this year is I got a sprayer uh, bottle and so when it sprays my soil at the top surface, it's not going to move my seedlings around too much. I finally am trying to solve the problem that I keep I keep watering, I pour like water onto the, the soil and it moves the seeds around and I think that's what's killing my seedlings. So we'll see if that's exactly what's going on. I got myself two of these Grand Bell Mix Sweet Peppers. I love how colorful they are and um, it's quite inexpensive for bell peppers. Now what I've heard about bell peppers is that when you grow each plant, Peppers are notorious for taking a long time to grow, and then when they, when the peppers, um, especially bell peppers, when they grow, because they have to get so large, 
uh, it takes a long time for that as well. So the plant takes a long time to grow. Then it takes a long time to grow the fruit that gets to the size that you want and is ripe and everything. And then um, sometimes critters get to it before you can. And the other thing is that um, the plants only produce a few bell, bell peppers each. So actually, um, if you want to make it worth your while, I should have probably bought more bell pepper seeds because they were so cheap. So I got myself two Serrano chili packs because I'm not sure if this is the type of uh, chili that I had that was really good, like a medium um, spice level and if that was the one. So I got two of them just in case they are the one that I want. Um, I, If you know, I recently bought from Baker Creek, my seed haul was like all chili peppers. Um, so... So I did have, I think, a Serrano already in there. So I just wanted to stockpile on that one. Then I got myself two habaneros because they're so pretty. And if they're too spicy for me, I can make like hot sauce and just eat small amounts of it. Or I could make it into a spray to spray my plants against pests and critters. And then I have this Hungarian hot wax I want to try. I don't know what it tastes like. I only got one. I should have probably got more. Then I got this Cayenne Long Slim Red Hot Pepper. And I already have that variety in the Fairy Morse. And I'm not sure if I got it in another kind, another company. But I really like it. So um, I just got one of those. And those are the summer growing hot weather crops. Now let's move on to flowers. Next I got myself a true lavender and I tried um, placing it on a wet um, napkin, the seeds, and trying to sprout it that way. Um, I haven't, I'm gonna stick it into the dirt and see how it fares. I got this mammoth Russian sunflower. I always grab sunflowers whenever I see them. I already have this, but I just never like leave it behind. I can always grow it and um, kind of like offer a little bit of shade to my plants on, a, on those really hot seasons. And also I feed the seeds to my chickens or the wildlife get to them sometimes before I can even give them to my chickens. But I love how they look and they bring in pollinators before the pests get to them first. Then, and they're a good distraction. Wouldn't you rather an animal get to your sunflowers than to your corn? So it might be worth growing for that reason. And, you know, some kind of distracting plant that they can chew on or eat that you can sacrifice and then here I got one lily putt zinnia and giants of California mixed colors isn't that so cute and especially it's so full and especially when it's like dwarf like short that would be really good in areas where you you don't need all the height I probably should have gotten more but I have a lot of zinnia seeds now, I have a lot of marigold seeds that I um, harvested in the past from my plants, but for some reason in recent years, they're supposed to be one of those really easy to grow plants, but for some reason, I haven't been able to grow them from my old seeds, so I don't know what happened. So I just got some fresh seeds. I got a marigold petite yellow, marigold French dwarf double mixed colors, and marigold cracker jack mixed colors and because I don't really want to buy a flat of, of flowers of seedlings when I can grow it from seed I think it's way less expensive so I got this bachelor but uh, try that it several times really fast bachelor button blue boy and bachelor button cyanus double mixed colors. So this same two varieties I already have in the fairy morse. Um, I just bought these again because uh, last year I grew a bunch of these and used uh, most of them. 
and then I've grown this uh, I tried sewing this before but it didn't come up and I just wanted a, a backup set of seeds and they grow so well and they're so pretty I love the blue color so I can't wait till the other one grows um, I'm and it's mixed colors so I'm hoping it has a few white and red ones um, because I want to um, grow something for the summer that's red white and blue next I got this bright lights mixed colors cosmos um, I always try to pick up some cosmos because um, I'm hope I already have a bright lights one but I'm just hoping that perhaps they have other shades in the new package um, and it doesn't hurt me to get get these because sometimes um, you know like for a child when it's their birthday or something um, you can you can give them a few package of seeds or like just um, just for fun in the spring you can give them a few package of seeds or if it's Easter you can give people seeds um, springtime I got some alyssum carpet of snow I'm gonna grow that kind of in the front and then um, some taller and taller plants um, supposedly pollinators love this and supposedly it smells good I haven't yet grown alyssum um, the seeds are really small now here are some cottage garden wildflower mix and look at that I love it so much there's a rubecchia sweet william lupin shasta daisy echinacea like everything that you want in all those other package of seeds and all you um, bachelor buttons I think back there everything that you could possibly want but in one package so I just got myself one I'm gonna grow this in a pot I got myself two of these helichrysum tall double mixed colors um, they're basically straw flowers and so like when you touch the flower um, it sounds it sounds like crispy and dry <laughs> and these are good for dry arrangements um, and the colors last and I really love how they look especially the bright pink ones next I got a variety of things just one of each a snapdragon tall rust resistant mixed colors one a Shasta Daisy Alaska mix and African Daisy Giant mixed colors and I didn't know it was mixed colors so that's a plus because I thought it was just this yellowish colored one but if it's mixed colors I would love it because I've seen them with different color centers and different colors it was at the Dollar Tree I also got this plant clips 20 pieces so they have some smaller clips and then some larger clips and some smaller ones and I got a set of two so that's about 40 um, I hope that will be enough because I plan on growing and trellising up tomato plants um, and it could also be used for other vining things so it's gonna be useful um, not very not bad for 20 pieces for about a dollar or a dollar 25 and then as I'm getting older it's getting harder to read things so here's a magnifying glass that has a light so it lights up so it'll be nice because sometimes I can't see just the tiniest things it's really annoying 